Good evening and welcome to Band for Life. Here we go again. Granger's pretending to be a radio DJ from the No, 30s. I'm not a radio DJ. I'm in the dark and this is the mysterious tales <laughs> the bands tell <laughs> everybody. Welcome. Oh, here to we go. Band for Life. Cue music. We should really start uh, recording this the right way around. Probably should. Because now it's dark. <laughs> no, no one will even notice when the video starts. It's like <laughs> nobody will, nobody will know a thing. <laughs> you all saw nothing. Nothing. <laughs> Just pretend it didn't happen. Didn't happen. Didn't happen. In fact, what's happening is it's it's getting light because it's so early in the morning. Mm-hmm. So welcome to Band for Life, MP. Welcome to Band for Life. I'm Granger. Uh, today we've got on uh, Soul Jacker, a band this evening. Side. Today. Today. This evening. This evening. Same thing. Was that really worth cutting me off for? Yes. Continue. Great. Okay, wonderful. Uh, <laughs> uh, yes, we got Soul Jacker in. Uh, started in about 2018. They've done some, uh, some pretty good looking gigs. Uh, they were signed up to a label at one point for a little bit, uh, which I think they'll probably talk about. They have um, been a little, 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 uh, they've been doing some online stuff through the COVID period. With some pretty uh, big names. With some pretty big names. Uh, and they've, uh, they've, now, they've now got a new manager, uh, little, uh, Mick Hudson, who also works for, or he does photography for Getty Images. Um, and yeah, he's, he's like planning some good things for them. And they've, got, they've had a lot of exposure through the COVID period, which is really good uh, because it's been a tough for a lot of bands and stuff. And they yeah. can't wait to get out there again, I reckon. And we can let them in. Let's get them in. Let's get them in. Here we go. It's going to get light. Perfect. So uh, tonight we've got Andy, Dan and uh, Jay from Souljacker. Thanks for coming on, guys. Hello. 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 Thanks for having us. Awesome. Now, see, the one big problem is my window here. At the beginning of this was light and now it's dark. It's darker now, isn't it? We've been got to fucked put, over by the weather. Put my fucking light on. It's all about continuity. So I think I might have undone a button as well. Where no one will notice. No one will see. It's fine. It's I'll fine. hypnotize them. So uh, we got your bi- we got your biography and we had a read over it. It looks like, you, to be fair, you've done quite a lot for even though you've only been going since 2019. Was that, I believe, or 2018? 18. 18, 18, 18, 18 yeah, yeah, three years now, yeah. Three years, and you seem to have done quite a lot. You've got a lot of reviews, like you've got like rock radio reviews, you've had BBC introducing reviews and stuff. Um, like, how did you actually all come together? Were you, were you like in separate bands first? Did you just meet? Did you like, did you know each other before? Or, no, but this, is, this seems to be James's question. This one, mm. no, I always seem to answer this one. Um, well, I think, um, Soul Jack, who was initially started as a as Andy's sort of brainchild, I know he, he wrote a lot of songs. Um, and has always been just writing, writing, writing. And once he got it in his mind that this was happening, he sought out a band. Um, there's there's obviously been like highs and lows getting to this point, but yeah, it's uh, it was it was a very a very gradual climb, wasn't it, Andy? With the uh, in terms of where you are now, but it's, yeah, it's we, always we, we we could have easily thrown the towel in about six or seven times by now, like. Uh, you're, uh, not, yeah. you're not in a yeah, band if you don't and now, the and now we've got the best lineup that we could ever yeah, want yeah, you know what I mean yeah. it's just a very high bar isn't it yeah yeah yeah, yeah. I mean when me and Dan were the two original we're the founding members so mm-hmm. to speak um, you know we've had a couple of other drummers come and go and a couple of other bass players come and go um, but it's all been replaced in house it's never been like just let's go and put an advert in a paper and get someone Damon our drummer is Dan's brother um, so he's been there from the start, and I've been in bands with James in the past. We've known each other about twelve years. So, uh, was, well, I think we kept trying to get James yeah, in, didn't we, from day one? But just for one reason or another, he was in other bands or committed to something else. Uh, but we've, we'll finally, we've enough. actually we finally got to what <laughs> Salt Jacker really is. I think. What does James? What do you play, James? I play bass. See, right there's there in there lies the problem with bass players. They're in about the proper uh, band halls, aren't they? They're on the same page. Yeah. <laughs> Bass players uh, to find a decent bass player is fucking near impossible. Well, and then oh, there's oh, drummers, and, and yeah. then even when you even when you find a decent one, though, it doesn't mean they're going to stick at it or anything, does it? Yeah, and and our, first, about- our first bass player won't name him. Quit when we got signed. He's like, oh, don't make- do that. That doesn't so make any know, sense. Don't do that, right? What? What? <laughs> 
You know, know. Oh, fair dues. That you doesn't know, make so. much sense, does it? Like, like you're in a band and then you're getting like attention and you're getting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We got offered the deal and literally he was like, "Oh, my job's too important." But this, hey, the, the, the bigger story is not in there. Do you remember uh, the second bass player Oasis had? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. but like, he was only in the band about four weeks, and Gwigsy, the original <laughs> bass player, had left, right? Yeah. This new guy came in, went on tour in America with Oasis, did the video for Wonder War, which is arguably the biggest hit, and apparently mm-hmm. just when they were on the bus driving to Letterman to do the Letterman show, he's like, no, I miss my girlfriend, I can't do this. <laughs> That's a true story! <laughs> just like, in America. Literally, just so giving it all up. You're right, it's, it's either for you or it's not, isn't it, you know? Um, our first bass player, he obviously loved playing with us and that, didn't he? But when it got serious, he was like, no, I'm all right, sir. Oh, bloody hell. So he's, he just wanted, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's the he's thing, like, it, it can happen, yeah. I mean, like, it can happen. Like, um, it depends on what you're in it for, doesn't it? Like, if, if, if somebody's committed to, like, the music and committed to making it work, then they'll just go for it, helpful leather. So it really depends on if, if they're, you know, if, like, they've got other things on, jobs or girlfriends, apparently. <laughs> like, just, like... Yeah, we don't talk about girlfriends in this band. No, <laughs> it's so subject in most bands I've found. I know, right? <laughs> we've had, we've had, I've had a girlfriend in a band with me. Oh my did, god, didn't fucking end well. Did not. Yeah, end well, yeah, well, well, you know, yeah, what, yeah, what did you yeah, expect? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it seemed like the right thing to do. She was a bassist, actually. It seemed like the five right years. It was great. The time. <laughs> How many years ago was this, Pete? When I, about what? Uh, Ten years. I don't ago? know. We were probably about eighteen, nineteen. Yeah. Okay, Ten eleven, years twelve years ago. ago. Jesus. Yeah, um, but no, didn't end well. No, no, no. <laughs> but it's good the way it kind of came together. And so it's like a gradual thing. And you said you've had a couple, like you've had a couple of down moments on the way up. Is that like oh, yeah. band members leaving or like just like? Sh- well, yeah, yeah. I mean, we've had a lot of stuff thrown at us. To be honest with you, yeah. I mean, the, the first record deal didn't end well for starters. Okay, that didn't what happened? Last long, uh, but that's a common story. Um, and then that caused like a bit of a divide between members at the time, you know. And uh, yeah, there was definitely a period, wasn't there? We'd only been going a year yeah. at that point that we nearly <laughs> knocked it on the head, you know, and yeah, then the yeah. album wouldn't have happened or anything, who knows? Yeah, yeah. Um, so we put something inside us, kept us going, and uh, we got the right people involved, and it all ended up going the right way. Yeah. But yeah, we've had problems with members, problems with members' girlfriends, you know, problems <laughs> with record labels, <laughs> uh, pop- problems with people stealing songs. Uh, you Stealing name, songs? Oh, oh yeah, yeah. What's that you, one about? You, what? you name it, mate. Uh, it, they're not worth mentioning. Uh, oh, really? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, they're not. Uh, but yeah, we've had it all, mate, already. We've had it all. That's, it was quite funny, actually, because when we were jamming for the first time in ages last week, mm. uh, we, we were joking around about stuff. We said, you know, we're, we're way beyond the implosion side now, like, way beyond it. It's just like, it is what it is now, because I think we've just about had it all happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Touch wood. <laughs> we've had it all happen. Yeah. Uh, how was it through the through the kind of COVID era last year when, when it kicked off in March? Because you guys were, were gigging, from what I can see, you, were, you kind of like were gigging quite a lot and you probably had like a lot more. Um, I don't know if, if you had, I think, did I read you had a tour? It looks like you had some. Yeah, we had lots booked, yeah. We had yeah, you had lots booked, booked in. Some big festivals and that, and then obviously COVID it, and that was that, boom. And it was a bit of a kick in the teeth, to say the least, because we had literally <laughs> spent, I mean, we've been together three years and the last year's been COVID. So yeah. work that out. You know, uh, yeah. you know, the first two years we built up and built up, and we're finally doing some decent gigs with some decent bands and playing some decent festivals, and things are looking like you know, yeah, we can really. We were kind of reborn, yeah. weren't we? Because we'd had such a rough patch in the yeah, first yeah. year, we were kind of like really raring to go again, and then and then COVID, then COVID came and everything just yeah. stopped. Yeah. But we utilised it online. You know, we did utilise well, yeah, like as it. much stuff as we could online, and to be honest, we've oh, we've benefited from it as much as we can. Yeah, 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 we've done what. I'm looking at. I think I watched one of these online gigs. Cause uh, is it Webfest? Yeah, yeah. He did. Cause Chris Barris, who looks like he headlined. Yeah, he headlined. Sure, yeah. I watched that because he's one of my favourite artists at the minute. I'm well down the rabbit hole of his gear. Is it's stuff. quite funny actually because uh, I don't know if you know where MMH, uh, home of rock radio. Um, they've just done a cracking review based on on that gig. Actually, we just got it today. Uh, yeah. um, so I, so, I might yeah. have actually seen no, his. I saw it already. I think it's on your Facebook, isn't it? I think you put it on you'd, have, you'd have remembered my pink hair. I think I had pink hair for it. <laughs> it was the only time we were doing a gig, whether it was online or not, was <laughs> last year. So I'm like, having pink hair for it. <laughs> it's just like gonna gonna go all out. Yeah, yeah. We've had a couple of bands that have done like online gigs. Maybe not like I've not had any that have done like an online festival. But they've done like online. 
things, you know, online yeah. shows, online gigs and stuff, and kind of kind of gone down that gone down that road because that's all they can do. Or we've had bands that have spent a lot of time uh, trying to like do home recordings mm-hmm. um, and trying to do like virtual band practices and things like that and stuff and re- releasing things and. Um, and just yeah, like you've got to have super stuff. fast internet to make that work. I know, yeah. right? I would that way. You'd have like because imagine the lag. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. I don't think it. Uh, yeah, it doesn't really work. I, I saw a lot of bands actually at the start of the lockdown, in particular, that were doing these uh, sort of isolated live things. Yeah, but yeah, it yeah, wasn't yeah. really live, is it? It's just a recording. No, you're still, you're still mixing <laughs> yeah, it. You I've can take them. take as many takes as you want. You just film it, make it look. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. yeah. We'll use the best one. Well, that's recording, mate. <laughs> you know. Like, have a great Saturday night. It's like, you know, it's like Thursday morning at 11 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> like, have a great night. Like, <laughs> yeah. I tried it with one of my bands and I was like, right, come on, lads, let's get down to it. And I was all right because I've got, you know, interface and nice mics and all that shit. <laughs> and uh, there's like the a, nice, uh, a nice Les Paul Jr. Is it on the wall there as well? Uh, that is no. <laughs> all right. No. Okay. It right. was. Is it was it? an old Epiphone, made in Japan Epiphone, but the headstock had snapped off it. And I found it in, uh, it was like a cash converter or something like that. Right. Oh. Uh, still got so the Epiphone neck on it though? Nope. I threw oh. some random neck on it, sanded it down, rattle canned it red, and threw some, it's actually not bad. It is a junior, isn't it? Has it got the yeah, P90 it is a junior. on it? Yeah it's, yeah, it's a junior. Oh yeah, I bet that sounds well chunky, that. Uh, yeah. It sounds all right. It sounds all right. Sorry, anyway, you were saying. <laughs> yeah. What was I saying? Well, see your guitar, right? What were you saying that? <laughs> Uh, I forgot where we were at. What about recording, uh, trying oh, yeah, to right. record with yeah, your yeah. old band. Yeah. So, I was like, so I was like, yeah, I'm all right, because I've got, you know, some, some all right gear. And uh, the bass player was like, yeah, I've got my phone. So I'm trying to fucking mix this thing, and I've got, like, decent recording of me, not bad of the singer, all right, electric kit from the, from the other guy, and then bass player with a fucking phone recording that's recorded on the other side of the room somewhere. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it just didn't work. I don't think I've ever seen that. Was that ever released, Peter? I don't think nope. I ever saw that. Never came out. <laughs> never never in fact, it. I think what I did was I programmed the bass. Because <laughs> I, I didn't have a bass at the time. I programmed the bass myself. <laughs> but I was like, yeah, I'm not... not You'd have been better off just making your guitar sound. <laughs> yeah, just octave down. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Just, just done yeah. that. Just, just do a muse and get a couple of pedals and have like a little synthesizer <laughs> do you on the say, end. Do you say a couple of pedals and muse with the same sentence? <laughs> <laughs> just a whole jock of pedals. And <laughs> I, think, I think he's got a set of dancers behind the stage, mate. I'm not even joking. Just tap <laughs> dancing on, 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 on his board. From boss ones, like, yeah. It's like, yeah. Have you noticed when he plays live, he's, ne- he's not got a pedal in sight. Yeah, it's weird. His guitar it is tech weird. must so be. Yeah, weird. Like He's obviously haggard, just got a yeah. massive team of yeah, yeah, yeah. pushers, <laughs> quite literally. A bunch of Irish, dan- Irish dancers in the back, just yeah. bouncing too about. Much, be that Michael Flatley, Flatley and that and his crew, won't it? <laughs> yeah. They'll be there like doing the river dance. Absolution or something, you know. Hey, it's all Ed Sheeran has. He has a bloody uh, Pro Tools tech that lives under the stage. Yeah, yeah with all his looping shit. Yeah, he doesn't do any of that himself, man. He's a, he's a fraud, mate. He's a fraud. <laughs> so, what what are some of your favourite gigs then? Because you've been, you've been, well, like you say, you've been going for three years, but obviously one year is has been COVID. But you've had some pretty big, you've done some pretty big festivals, and I know you've done a couple of festivals where you've, where you've been on the same lineup as like uh, there was one. I think Pigeon Detectives were on there. There was one with the Fratellis on there. Um, what was some of your like favourite? Because <clears> it could be different between between some of you. You might have different favourites for different reasons. What's your um, absolute favourite one, Dan? Uh, one of them was probably the cavern in Liverpool. Yeah, Liverpool. that wasn't even supported. It was, well, it was with the pages, it was great, but it wasn't an established <laughs> name. But that was ace, one at the cavern. Yeah, yeah, and it was a busy was, night as well. That was that fantastic, was that. Yeah, were you there, Jay? Yeah. I was in, in the audience, mate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah and, uh, but for me, it's probably. Probably Tivoli with the real people. Yeah, was, I like that, even though because we were the support band. There wasn't many people there for us necessarily. Very small. We, we, we were tight. Yeah, we were it. tight, and uh, it came across really well. And Martin Lappin, the guitarist and the lead people, he was said you should have been headlining tonight. Oh, nice! It's lovely it's when nice you hear things like that from your peers. Yeah, isn't yeah. It? yeah. it's yeah. also when you hear things like that. Yeah, What's yeah. Been your best gig with us, Jay? What with you? <laughs> I haven't done one yet. <laughs> <laughs> you joined a few weeks ago, properly. So. Oh, really? Oh, <laughs> right. Not okay. Not with us yet. <clears throat> Right, right, okay. He's been at a lot of the gigs. I've been at <laughs> a lot of them. He's done the sound for us at some of them as well. Uh, in fact, the, all the ones with the bad sound, just funnily enough. Oh, yeah, I read in the bio that Tracy sent over. You're, you're an engineer, aren't you? I am, yeah. By yeah. trade. Every band has got the tech geek. 
That's why I'm using. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Usually ends up being. Not it. It belongs to his boss. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, amazing, amazing. Why? What made them the? What made them like the best gigs for you guys? Like, is it because is was it just the crowd, the atmosphere, the? Well, the cavern. I don't know if you've been there yourself or played there. Yourself. Yeah, yeah. We've not, I've not played uh, that. I've been there. It's just yeah. It's just just a special place, isn't it? In general, yeah. just to get on the stage there, just like well, all right, fair dues, because. Yeah. Uh, They've got all pictures, haven't they, in the back bit in the bar of everyone that's played there, yeah. and, and it's yeah, you know, but that's you know, mega. You know, it's quite you're quite in all like, and that was that's the kind of thing that matters to me. Like, what you know, what was it for you? The cavern, what was the same sort of thing, really? Yeah, well, yeah, and is that? But, uh, I know just the feel of the place in it as well. I think yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I think, I think the nostalgia plays a massive part because even with the tiff, when we first played there, and it was with the real people. I couldn't get out of me. I Oasis have played there. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I think it's a lot to do with who's been there before, isn't it? And I was like that when we, yeah, play, we played stage. Academy 3 in Manchester and that's, mm. that's had some mega people on it. Yeah. And we were like... Yeah. Well, it does. Like, it, makes you, shit. It, it, it makes you think this is what it's about, doesn't it, in a way? Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah it does. It does. I mean, I've heard, I've heard like a little band, oh, what they call now, is it the Beatles or something might have played in the cavern? I don't know, you know. Like, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Well, yeah, I don't know. They come and go. I don't know. Maybe like a one hit one. Out. They're not from Manchester, <laughs> way, are they? So they can't no, they're not from, not from Manchester. No, nah, I think they're from fuck Liverpool, off. I think. <laughs> yeah, smart. I never, yeah. Third day, they might have played there at some point. So <laughs> we've been. I've been to the cabin. I don't think my band's ever played there. In fact, I've never together. had a band play there. I think we've been booked been to play. There. It's not come off. Definitely been there, and I, re- I remember them having the pictures on the walls and stuff. Yeah, all across yeah. it and all that, and that oh, like, and monkeys and Travis and yeah, 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 yeah. 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 It's all, they're all there. Oh. We used to have a. We used to have a tiny little venue around the corner from where me and Pete. Li- well, Pete used to live and where I live right now, called uh, the Blue Cat Cafe. And they, had, they used to have some good bands on, didn't they, Pete? Do you remember? They'd be going for yeah, years. They, they had like stuff on in there. Yeah, like did he have money on from Stone Roses at some point? Because he lives around there, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah he, he lives just behind it. Electric Six on. Do you yeah, remember? Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Danger High Danger, Voltage. Danger, yeah, 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 yeah high, high Voltage. voltage. <laughs> they had, I think they, I think they had Oasis on, but I don't, I, don't, I can't rectify. I can't clarify if that was true or not. But I, I think like, Oasis played in most places around Manchester, at least at least when they started. Uh, start, yeah, honest, yeah, yeah, yeah. When, when they started up and all that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, amazing. What about then? What about any gigs that haven't gone to plan? Is there, ever, is there, has there ever been any gigs where, for whatever reason, maybe it's the crowd, maybe it's some happened on stage, maybe it's engineers, although you've got your, you've got your engineer in the band already, but... <laughs> but, but yeah, <laughs> some, like, for some reason, hundreds more are flooding into me than the good ones. <laughs> <laughs> God remember, knows remember, why. Remember, do you remember the last <laughs> Ferry. Yeah, oh yeah, 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 we did. We did this. Uh, this like uh, it wasn't a big thing really. It was more like a, a family sort of event in a park, you know, in the summer out in Birkenhead, I think it was. Yeah. And uh, we, we were booked to play in that. And then about an hour before we got there, we got a message off the promoter saying like, uh, oh, "We've been let down on, on the drum kit." And we're like, "All oh, right, okay. Well, we've, uh, we've we've left. We've only got breakables now with us. What we're going to do is, don't worry, I'll, I'll sort something out." <laughs> so we get there, and there was like a. A fifty pound Argos electric drum kit, right? And right, I'm not joking. Electric, right? Right. And our drummer, our drummer at the time was, was quite a lively one, wasn't he? You know, he uh, he, he made yeah, the most just, out of the kit, like it was impossible. And uh, well, it wasn't just that it was impossible because the electric kit. He plugged it all in, and we got going, and we did a sound check. But he had no monitors, so, so oh all the sound, God. so all the sound from the electric kit going out. So everyone could hear that great, but but we couldn't on the stage. Oh yeah. shit! Yeah, so where'd you? Yeah. Oh man! Yeah, I mean, so, uh, yeah. so we did we did one song, yeah, didn't we? Yeah. Sorry, mate. Uh, I think I think we're done here today. Like, how are you yeah. supposed to? How are you supposed to? <laughs> yeah, we tried. We tried. We did a song. We did a song. We even had people that come from Wales and that didn't need to stay. Yeah, yeah. Oh no way! That's yeah. crazy. That's you didn't even, cool. didn't even have monitors. What was that called? Glass Glastonbury. <laughs> It was, we're actually going to play it this year if it goes ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but we're definitely going to make sure we've got a spare drum kit at hand. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just oh, stick man. another drum kit in the boot. It's fine. Is this for the, is it, so they have, did they all have an electric kit for the entire gig then because of that? It was, like, I, think, I think after we couldn't do right. it, I think he, he, he pulled it up. Well, actually, he started... Wow. Uh, he started singing. Oh, yeah, so the guy karaoke. <laughs> yeah, he got, he got up on the stage and started doing a Eminem. On the karaoke. Uh, <laughs> do you know what? It's so surreal when I think about it. You know, he was a really big guy with tattoos yeah, yeah, and cheekness. Yeah. And, and that's like, like a vestal. From Birkhead, like, like, he made what you looking at. And he starts doing, uh, what is it, like, <laughs> the real Slim Shady and that, didn't he? Like, yeah. that, just, that, that, that just replaced the whole gig. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> right. 
Well, let's go hey, over. that's thinking on your feet, that. That's a proper promoter. Yeah, that's, that what we, well, that's one thing I do remember <laughs> thinking. I thought, you know what? He's kept the show going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He didn't set nice. about Once we said we were done, it was, right, then, yeah, straight out with the karaoke boom. Straight out of the karaoke. <laughs> 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 Yeah. That's amazing. <laughs> just like try and picture this like happening. Did a band go on after him? Like, I don't know. We had to know. You just left. Yeah, that was us. That was took the money and run. And the football. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> See you later. <laughs> oh, okay, dear. Yeah. Well, hopefully this year, this year when it goes ahead, um, it'll. There'll be a kid. Easier. There'll be yeah, a kid. I'm pretty sure it'll be much better this time. Because <laughs> yeah. yeah. you've got gigs. I'm actually looking forward to it, to be honest with you, because uh, when it does go right, it's a really, really good gig. Mm. You've got a couple of other bookings, haven't you? Like, I know you've got the cavern. Uh, we've um, not got that book, not booked to play there again. No, we've only got a couple oh. of things booked in for this year so far. Um, literally small gigs. Everything else is, well, the phrase that's getting used is, is lightly penciled in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've got, yeah, yeah, got yeah. some pretty good things penciled in, but. Mm. Until the councils and that say they can definitely go ahead, we can't really say much. Yeah, yeah. we've got we've got a decent sized festival coming up, and at the minute they're kind of like, do we? Same uh, with you, yeah. yeah. Yeah, they're like, have we got the balls to spend the money before we before we actually go for it? I think yeah. that is exactly what a lot of people are thinking about. Yeah, I mean, yeah. a lot of them are going to have to downsize and things like that, so it might not be as economical for them just having one bar instead of six or whatever you know what I mean yeah it's, yeah because uh, I'm not confident that the festivals will happen we'll just have to see keep, keep, what is it they say uh, think think of the what is it think for the worst think for the best and hope for is it? think of the worst hope for the best something like that yeah <laughs> that's it yeah yeah think something, for the worst. Like something like that yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> So what about okay? So what about any gigs that any other gigs that haven't like gone to plan or anything? I know you mentioned you mentioned that one about the well, I know James like you haven't you haven't done a gig yet, but um, he's been though. He's been to plan. He's to probably still give the same same. Uh, okay. Go on, uh, then. Oh, well, I, I don't know. <laughs> go on, go I on. Say, get... say the one you want to say. <laughs> oh, you know what I'm going to say. Oh, really? <laughs> it was the it was the single launch. You know the one I kindly offered my services to mix the band for and to be fair it was a good gig it was a very good gig but yeah until my voice broke after the first well song. i'm getting to that bit mate i'm, I'm softening the blow <laughs> <laughs> it was uh you went on very late didn't you and yeah. uh i don't know whether you've heard the animals but that was the one that was just like that was the gig ender and unfortunately it was it was, it was unrecoverable yeah. really wasn't it <laughs> yeah but it, what it could went, we do what could we do could we just like just play instrumental for the that's rest it of the I mean you you soldiered well, on through it like but it was uh, word, yeah that's one way you could put it yeah it wasn't the, it wasn't our proudest moment and, and, happens, and the bad thing was it was a past street studios it was a single launch there was like there was loads of people mm. there and then by the time we got to the end of the set there was about 10 left like, you know, oh. really sympathetic applauders, like, like, oh, we tried, didn't we and, <laughs> and, and it was frustrating for us because we knew what we could do you know what I mean and, yeah. and once, I don't know if you've ever had it happen, I don't know if either of you guys are vocalists, but once it breaks in a gig, you're gone. You can't, you can't get it yeah. back. You know, imagine yeah. how frustrating it is when you hit your head, say and do one thing and then your voice is doing another. I've never, ever been in that position before and, and such what I won't be again. You should blame yeah, me. That's, that's, that was a nightmare yeah. gig, definitely. Had you been on it all day? Yeah. Or, was it, or, was it, or was it just a case of like... No comment, no comment. No comment. <laughs> <laughs> Ten or twelve points. Got a small bottles of vodka, maybe, mate. Oh man, yeah, 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 and then and then it went on. <laughs> yeah, I would have, I would have, I would have greatly benefited from a bottle of water on stage, definitely. Yeah, yeah. So the best thing is, I recorded that gig as well. I uh, very yeah. quickly pressed delete. <laughs> like, oh, yeah, well, yeah, well, we had it all planned, you know what I mean? We were playing at Parsing Studios. They all planned, oh, yeah, it could be a live album. You know, no, 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 didn't no. happen. Because <laughs> <laughs> we, yeah, like, we, I, I used to be the singer in the band that me and Pete used to be in. Uh, and I've, I've, I've had, I, I think there was one gig actually, I remember, Pete. Um, there was a few. It was a battle of, there was a few. <laughs> there was it was a, a battle few. of bands where, where I, had a, I was only young, I was like 18 or something. I had a bottle of wine before I went on. Was a bottle and a half, maybe, maybe two, whatever. 
Um, and I, <laughs> I remember oh, coming off. I know, and I remember you like you coming up, coming off, and you being like, "You were fucking hammered," and I was like, "I feel fine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fine. <laughs> I'm flying." <laughs> uh, um, and yeah, yeah, I remember that the, the voice wasn't. The next day. <laughs> <laughs> well, I thought I sounded all right, but I think it was a video recording somebody did, and I was like, "Who the fuck yeah. sing? Who's, who's that? Is that me singing? What the fuck?" <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing I hate more than watching back a fucking shit phone recording the next day, and you think it was an amazing gig, and then you watch it back, and you're like, "No." I felt, I felt it, man. God. Yeah, no. Yeah, no, no, we didn't get we, we didn't get through either, and we got a second chance. We didn't get through a second time. <laughs> no way. <laughs> oh, well. like we, we really like you. Actually, it. do it sober the next time as well. I think I did the next time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh dear. That's probably the issue. Um, yeah, we, we did get through again. <laughs> Um, but yeah, but um, okay. So we spoke about some cookies and some some baggies and some gigs coming up as well. Um, and what about like so the album? Um, how long did it take you to kind of get it together and record it and everything? You recorded it before COVID, didn't you? It was released. Uh, oh wait, when was it released now? Well, we started recording it before yeah. COVID. That was the, again part of the problem because then we couldn't get in the studio. Yeah. Um, so we had like I think three or four songs or something recorded. Yeah. No, we like. Are we even going to get this finished? You know what? Yeah. what crap? And uh, we were quite lucky because we lived in Wales at the time. That I think it was in August last year. They, they eased the restrictions slightly yeah, for did. about yeah. a month. Yeah, yeah. Um, so we managed to go in, you know, individually and then record it. But it was still weird. It wasn't how we wanted to do it. You know what yeah. I mean? Uh, but we were just lucky that we knew the songs, um, so we could do it. Uh, it'll be a lot nicer this time doing it. You know, a bit more as a proper band. Yeah, yeah. When you're all there, because it's an experience together, isn't it? That's that's the kind of the point. Yeah. Isn't it? You yeah. know, you, you do it together in, in that experience. Um, me and Pete have actually both agreed on what our favourite song is of the ones okay. that we've been that we've been sent. Yeah, um, we're both into uh, Doctor Smith. Yeah, it seems to be a popular one. That it does seem to be a popular one. Yeah. Yeah. Are you, are you lost in that. space fans? I, do, I know it. Yeah, yeah. In, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The pain, the pain. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> don't, know, don't know why I called it that, but you know. <laughs> I like watercolors too, though, actually. Yeah. For a second. And then um and then the other one's got a really nice fucking opening riff. It's proper like what's it called now? The other one was uh da, da, animals. Da, da. Yeah, animals, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that, Tracy centers. that real centers kind of like three. bluesy, rocky guitar at the start where it's got that kind of feel to it. Where'd you get your influences from actually? Like what kind of it's kind of rock, blues. It's hard to place. For me. It's hard to place. It's well, because it's eclectic, it really mm. is. It really is. Um I mean, the, the, the first album, which obviously I wrote the songs for, but that's mm. going to change. We've got we've all right on the new one, which is going to be exciting. But yeah. on the first one, for me, it's uh, a bit of a mix between your sort of '90s grunge <clears throat> and alt rock in America, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, but then combined with your your Brit pop and indie of, of Britain, but at the same time, because obviously you know it was teenager in the '90s and that, so it's like uh, it, it, I, I, I was lucky enough to bridge that gap between the, the two. You know what I mean? And I've managed yeah. to get them both in, so I think we grab people that like the '90s American stuff and the '90s English stuff. Uh, yeah, it seems to be kind of like a, yeah, it seems to be like kind of a, a, a middle ground between the two. Well, yeah, I've had, literally had someone say to me, "The animal sounds like Soundgarden," and then I've had someone from another another place say it sounds like the Stone Roses. And you're like, "Well, how does that work?" Do you know, ah. what I mean? you know. I mean, to be compared to Soundgarden and Stone <coughs> Roses, it's still an added, like, either way, like, you'll take it, you oh, know? Oh, like, yeah. if, I, if I took on board, it would be compared to, like, the BBC and stuff like that, I wouldn't fit through this door, honestly. The Black, <laughs> the Black Sabbath, The Who, Soundgarden, but, you know, we've, we've got no pressure on us whatsoever, mate. So you say you signed. Who, how did that all come about? Was it just sort of, you know, right place at the right time, or...? Is it I knowing somebody Mick, or... Mick Hudson's your manager, isn't it? I'll be, I'll be honest with you, I can't remember exactly the first <laughs> time I spoke to Brian, and that's not due to any sort of alcohol or drug use. Um, <laughs> I think it was literally just through an online presence, and, and then uh, he, he turned up at, didn't he, at the saddle gig didn't he, in, in Chester, and he yeah. was like, uh, you know, do you, do you want a deal? A bit like an Alan McGee thing type thing, do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But believe me, he wasn't Alan McGee. Um, and... Uh, he, well, it just for that. He booked us a gig, didn't it? Like Liverpool Waterfront, which Jay's old band shared the bill with. Uh, we, I rang him up and said, "Do you want to come and play with us there?" Yeah. Um, so they actually ended up being our label mates for a bit as well. But uh, but that was all. It was all a bit of a sham on oh, it yeah, all. Cool. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he didn't know what he was doing. I think he was a bit of a, a Tony Wilson wannabe. 
And, uh, right. and, then, and then as soon as he started complaining to us after the first EP about the figure sort of not being high enough, I was like, well, are you going to get us on the radio or something then, mate, or do something to, to make that happen? Yeah. That's not our, we've, we've, we've done our bit. We've recorded the song and we do the gigs and that. Um, the promotion side was just really, really bad. Uh, still doing uh, everything ourselves. We were doing everything just, ourselves, basically. All, all we got out of them was recording a couple of songs, really. Yeah. Um, and then we had to completely plug them ourselves, which is not what we signed up for. There was a lot of dots in the, in the contract, wasn't there? You know was what it, I mean? A lot of zeros in the contract. <laughs> not like, where's, where is it all, mate? Uh, was it kind of a, a difficult decision to walk away from that then? Because I can imagine it. I, I mean, I've never been signed in a band before but i can imagine it being like fucking yeah huge. Don't, don't, don't get the wrong on the stick mate i don't think it was proper uh, you, know, uh, you know it was, uh, it, was a, it was a proper shambolic deal like you know i mean i had no problem whatsoever walking away from it uh, the, yeah, dr- yeah. the old the old drummer out of omd read through it and he was like this looks like something from the 80s mate <laughs> and honestly he did he, that's exactly what he Probably said the best decision the band, you know, yeah, the band yeah, I mean, made. I, well yeah in a lot of ways because sadly it did divide the band at the time um, right, yeah, right. you asked me was it hard for me it wasn't for me to walk away and, mm. and I think we caused yeah. a, like I said there was a divide me and you kind of took we went one way one and, way, the, other two and the other two lads went the other and it could have easily been the end of it you know what yeah, I mean yeah, but, uh, yeah. What, one of the times when it when it was uh, kind of like make or break it was almost almost yeah. done kind of thing but it just drove us then when we went to the, the, the swanky offices and that down on the, <laughs> the waterfront in Liverpool and that to chat to them about the contract and that like um, I remember just thinking to myself, you know what I mean? This everything he was saying just, just was making me dry. I was thinking, right, well, as soon as we leave this room, let's smash it, mate. Let's get, yeah, let's get another drummer, yeah, get another bass player, and put him in yeah, his place. Like, yeah, and, yeah, uh, yeah. and I think we have already. <laughs> yeah, because how, how did you come about with Mick and Tracy then? Because you've got uh, is it Mick Hudson now? Is that his name? Yeah, Mick. Uh, yeah, yeah, very famous you know, photographer. Photographer uh, for, for he does Getty images and stuff, doesn't he? So he, he does some good yeah. stuff. Oh yeah, he's um, Mr. Getty really, yeah. Mr. Yeah. Mr. Getty, how did that come about? Uh, the Webfest gig actually, which seems to have got us a lot of attention. Um, cool. it, was, it, was, it was funny really, we did that gig, it had been online for a couple of days and then uh, I knew he was uh, a follower of the band and I knew that he was a photographer but I didn't actually know how much influence and sway he had in the industry um, at that point. But he messaged me from, from his yacht, I think he was out in the med with his missus at the time. I'm not even joking. <laughs> and he's like, oh, uh, you know, well, I love that gig and all that. Really reminded me of old Nirvana and all this type thing and that. And then he goes, uh, have you got a manager? So I told him about the nightmare that we'd had with like Evolution Records and that line. And I said, to be mm-hmm. honest, we're much happier at the moment, just sailors steady without anything. So uh, he said to us, he goes, uh, well, I'll tell you what, if I can get you on two major festivals and into Abbey Road next year, would you like me to be a manager? So it's like, uh, well, well, let me have a think about it. Nah, mate, it's all right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, we'll do it ourselves, don't worry. <laughs> I, 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 I may have answered before asking the other lad. I may have done. May have done. Um, but yeah, but then obviously, you know, I can say with the whole COVID thing, it's just been put back a bit and having to be unsure. But it's great to have him on board. I mean, he, 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 he pretty much mm-hmm. wanted to create as a slip, not in Marilyn Manson and people yeah, like that. Meant. Wow. Uh, but the big, big names, aren't they? So um, we're, we're very, very pleased to have him involved. And he's a lovely fella, too. Um, so fingers crossed. Once everything comes back to normal, <clears throat> we can we can start going to Abbey Road and doing these big yeah. Mo- and yeah. That. It must be nice to know that you've got that on the horizon. Then waiting for you as soon as it all does come back. If it's a little a bit frustrating. It's been a lifeline, mate. I'm not. I'm not going to lie to you. It's been a lifeline. This last 12, 18 months has been miserable, and for a lot of people, yeah. a lot of people. So yeah, it has been a lifeline. Mm-hmm. Definitely knowing that we've got that light at the end of the tunnel. Um, I mean, we're talking about next year and stuff already, aren't we? Yeah, what we're going to do yeah, next year yeah. and that. So, yeah. I reckon, I, I reckon next year, fingers crossed, everything should be pretty much back to normal. I reckon yeah, it, it should it, be. We're hopefully on the downturn now, like the, the, that it's starting to get like the numbers are dropping and mm-hmm, stuff. And mm-hmm. everyone's been jabbed up. And well, not everyone, most people have been jabbed up and stuff. And yeah, yeah. So That's I think. The worst phrasing for the vaccination. Man. Jabbed <laughs> up. <laughs> yeah. Jabbed up now. Yeah, jabbed up. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's getting jammed up yeah. and it's all going great. Nation of junkies. <laughs> yeah, they'll all be, we'll all be like strung out, like ready for soul jacket. <laughs> yeah. so, well, we'll all get wicked 5G. Hurry up, I've got the shape. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, the thing is, like, you can look back on this interview after you've done all these big festivals and you've had loads of exposure and be like, hey, remember that one? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, that's it, that's it. Because you've done some, you've had some good, re- like, like I said, reviews and interviews. They, they've come over the last. 
kind of year or since Webfest or some of them before? You've had like rock radio and anything you've seen to do with us online has literally yep. been during the lockdown because right. before that we didn't yeah. really bother. We were out gigging every week, yeah, twice yeah. a week. Yeah, yeah, we didn't yeah. have time to be doing all that. Yeah. But then as soon as it happened and we knew that was our only way of interacting with the people yeah. like our stuff, we had to push it, you know. Well, so it's cool. all been recent, that all been recent. Because I mean, you've, you've done all right because. Didn't you, something happened, did your Facebook get hacked or something? Yeah, yeah, that was, uh, that was a bummer. It happened so fast as well. It was 10 o'clock on a Saturday morning and my phone bleeped and it says, Andy Salter has removed you as admin from the Soul Jack page. Obviously, I, I hadn't removed myself. <laughs> so, I, I, so I was like, what, what, what? So just as I went to log into Facebook to see what was going on, next minute, I get a decline thing from my bank saying so and so much money has been tried to take out. Oh, oh shit. Right, and I'm thinking, oh no, yeah, what's going on? On a lot of occasions. Yeah, so yeah. yeah. So, 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 so my first instinct was sort my bank out. And then by the time we'd gone onto Facebook, we'd, we'd lost the page. And there was like 14,000 followers on there, three years worth of videos and pictures yeah, and, and statuses, yeah. whatever else. Gig, I'm gigs and all that. Built up and the contacts, you know, and it's hard to, to build it to get them back because, you know, it's they don't know because. We can't we can't post on that page to say it's not us anymore. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. think the new one's doing all right because what, what was it like March or something? I think I saw it pop up. Yeah, uh, I don't even know if it was maybe maybe last month. Yeah, I think it was about it's last month, month. About last month. Yeah. Oh yeah. To be fair, it was it was quite refreshing in a way, and I did actually say to James and, and to Dan and that at rehearsals through the week. I said it's a uh, it's a bit like a fresh start. Yeah. Because we've met with it's like yeah there might have been fourteen thousand people on the other page. But now the the twelve or thirteen hundred or whatever that have like come instantly over, they're the <coughs> ones that are really into us, and we're noticing yeah. it in the interaction as well. Yeah. You know, yeah. Someone uh, uh, someone left a comment on one of one of our videos the other day, and uh, he said that a hundred genuine, real, dedicated followers is better than a million just like yeah. Instagram yeah. followers yeah. or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and I think it's took this to happen for us to learn that maybe. Yeah. It, it looked great having great eye numbers and that on everything, you know. But you were getting like low, low interaction and stuff. Yeah. Now it's it seems a bit more intimate, like. And we even set up a new group that nicknamed like the Soulmates Group, <laughs> <laughs> and that's had the exact same impact. It's just it just seems to have brought us all closer together in a in a non cheesy way. You know, I guess yeah. in a weird way as well, it'll it'll kind of play to the algorithm as well because you'll get more people like flooding over all at once. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Once well, they yeah, find possibly. out that the old one was gone. Yeah, yeah, and when we, you do, start we do seem to have more interaction, yeah. And when you start gigging again and your exposure goes up again from a, not just an online point of view, but from a physical gigging point mm -hmm. of view, because after COVID and like if these festivals go ahead, it's going to be fucking rammed. Like, oh, everyone's going to be yeah. well up for everything. It's going to be so gonna hungry, be, aren't they? Yeah. Everyone's going to be wrecked and rammed and it's going to be like, it's going to be great. Like, it's, it's going to be, be carnage. Man, I can't wait to start gigging. <laughs> carnage. <I love> <laughs> it's going to be it's gonna carnage. Be carnage. <laughs> <laughs> that should be good, shouldn't it? Jabbing up everywhere. <laughs> Everyone's just jabbing up like, you can't quit unless you've had your jab fucking sticking in me. <laughs> Let me what do those dogs. Let's give it me whatever it is. You come in the stunts for yeah, What a quick jab in the toilet. Yeah. Oh, amazing, amazing, amazing. Um, do you want to do some... George Michael comment in. Yeah. <laughs> do you want to do... Um, and obviously, James, you've still got to... You've got your first gig planned, I first guess. Like... come. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, oh, oh well James can't wait can you where's your first gig gonna be mate out of all the places in the world Liverpool no real <laughs> mate oh shit yeah, real, yeah, real. real I can't wait mate. oh how lovely that, not that we're taking anything away from real but it's very much a warm up gig it is brilliant real I love real warming up for yeah, you've never been there once once <laughs> <laughs> Fish and chips before. Yeah, it's an old promoter friend of ours. He's helped us out in the past, Danny, and we just thought that'll be the first a great place to just go and just smash it out for you know. Yeah, you do need a decent yeah. warm up. You do need I a decent so, warm up yeah. gig. Yeah, yeah. We, uh, want, I... we were actually meant to play in Flint Castle, weren't we? The week after it, that was going to be the warm up for that. Actually, headline in Flint Castle, but that's been cancelled because of COVID. Because Wales have cancelled yeah. everything. Yeah, yeah. No yeah. oh, shit. Yeah, I was reading about uh, someone was saying online about being gig fit again. About how like they need to now now they've got gigs back on again they've got to, like practice standing up and like practice playing for like two hours straight practice and all that. Yeah. yeah yeah he was like I would play he, he was like I was jamming with my daughter and I was fucking knackered yeah yeah no I can believe that I can believe it I go out busking now and then now that I'm back in Chester yeah and I was out and I was out on Saturday and uh, 
after playing for about two hours, I started noticing my hand was knackered. You know, <laughs> like, you know, I was like, oh, I haven't been playing for long, you know, for long. Like, it's weird, isn't it? Yeah, get, get the cramps coming in. Like, yeah, you know, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. So you're right there. I suppose it's like being a footballer or anything. You've got to be match fit, haven't you? Yeah. yeah, exactly the same. But yeah, I think we'll be as well prepared as we can be. Yeah, yeah, good, good, good. Uh, yeah, yeah, just plug it. Yeah, any um, pages, websites, music, whatever you do that. Uh, no, no, to be honest with you, we're, 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 we've got a new thing. We're going to be recording new stuff very, very soon. So it's all, there's nothing to plug just yet. But I tell you what, we have, when we have the new single ready, we'll, we'll come back on. And yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, awesome. Yeah, you can do like a little, little promo. Space. We'll, we'll pop your links down below in the description to our subscriber out there. Um, so you can go and uh, check out Soul Jacker. Um, we've heard them. They're awesome. We can't wait to see you guys live at some point. Yeah. I say this to we everybody. Can't. Another band in the room. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Because it'll be, it'll be a blast. It'll be good. It'll be good. We'll go and we'll go. We'll go. We'll come to Chester. Come to Chester. And we'll, uh, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll we're going to be going all over. We'll be going all over the place. We will have a Manchester gig. Uh, we will definitely have a Manchester no, gig. But we're just, no, we'll, just, we'll, just, we'll, not, just not confirmed yet. Yeah, yeah. We'll see it anyway. When We'll see the. We'll follow you pages anyway so we'll probably see it cool oh. but yeah yeah um yeah. awesome awesome <laughs> all right well thanks so much for coming in guys um, yeah thanks guys we Been shall a pleasure. we shall so, see, yeah, yeah take it easy boys see, see you later cheers nice cheers guys guys see you soon see you, see you later bye, bye, bye.
That was Soul Jacker. That was Soul Jacker. We've got a little snippet there of uh, Dr. Smith at the yeah, end. Great tune. It's our favourite. We both great said tune. it in the interview, actually, that it's our favourite tune. I can't wait to see them. I think they'll be really good live. Like, I've yeah, seen yeah. Videos, videos of them. They look good. Um, and they've got a good presence. They've got a good vibe about them. They've got a real band vibe, I feel like. Like a real band do you know what I mean? Well, they are a real band, explain. yes. I know they are, but like, <laughs> it's like, I don't know, like, they've got, they've, got, they've got a vibe, they've got a vibe, they've got good energy, good energy, good energy. I think they're going places, them guys. They've got a good backing so. behind them, they've got... See what gigs got lined up, it depends on, like, if, if they, the gigs got lined up, if they get on those festivals and stuff, they could easily mm. just propel. Watch so. this space. Yeah, yeah. I hope so, I hope in a year or two we come back and watch this and like, hey, those guys were on our channel. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think yeah. that's all we've got time for, man. That is all we've got time for. Uh, you can find the podcast on Apple Music. Uh, you can find the podcast on Spotify. You can find the yeah. podcast on Google. You can find this podcast anywhere. Yeah. But the best place to look is right here on YouTube. Right here on the YouTubes. Uh, please consider subscribing and ringing the bell and yeah. leaving a comment. And uh, if, you, if you like us, we're banned for life. If you don't like us, we're someone else. See you next week. Bye-bye.